Danjo, thank you everyone um, for being here with us today. Um, thank you, Matt. And I just want to say that my full name in Athabaskan is Nancy Ray. It's not just Nancy, so please do have the courtesy to refer to me in the name that was given to me by my ancestors. Um, I'm gonna turn off my camera, but I do have smudge in our way. It's not about being seen. It's about the words that we said in the intention. Thank you. Creator, hear our words. Prayers rise like smoke from the fire for our sisters, mothers, daughters, wives, brothers, uncles, who have been taken from us, lost to the night. Their spirits call to us, they seek justice, we seek peace. We stand together, hearts heavy with grief, but also filled with the strength of our ancestors. Their blood in our veins, giving us power. We seek truth, we seek healing, we seek a better world. We raise our voices, we speak their names, we sing their songs so they're not forgotten, so that their stories are heard. We will not rest until their voices are heard, their memory is honored, and their justice is served. We call upon our ancestors, upon the spirits of the earth, the sky, the land, the water, to guide us, to give us strength, to assist us, to assist us in our fight, to bring our loved ones home, to bring them to peace, to end this cycle of violence brought to our land and our water and our communities. We stand fierce, unyielding as warriors to this evil to bring healing to our community. We gather in this forum, we stand side to side in this circle as warriors, fierce and unyielding, and we demand justice. We demand justice. We demand justice. We demand justice for our stolen people. We are the rising voice of their relatives, their advocates, their warriors, their sisters, their mothers, and we will not rest until their truth is brought to light. We pray for our missing and murdered relatives, for their families left behind, for the communities who wonder where they are, for the mothers who shed their tears in our presence. And we pray for healing, for strength. We ask for unity. And we stand together in this fight for justice with our friends at the State Department and the Colorado departments that are here. So allow our voices to be heard, Creator, as our prayers rise from the smoke, from the fire. Carry our prayers to their spirits so they know they're not alone. May our ancestors hear us. May you guide us and give us strength. May the land heal them wherever they are and the water strengthen them because we stand here as a community in solidarity, one people, one purpose, one heart. Thank you for hearing my words. Thank you to my elders for allowing me to speak before you. And thank you for my sisters who stand with me in this fight and my brothers who accompany us. Thank you, Matt, back to you. Uh, thank you, Nancy, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, just a little overview here as we get started. Um, I'm going to turn it over shortly to Deputy Director Old Metal to uh, provide a review of the meetings that we had in August and October. Uh, but I just want to formally welcome all of you uh, here. It's great to see so many of you again. Uh, I really enjoyed our conversation when we had our special uh, meeting last month uh, to discuss the opening for the OMIR uh, director position. And we will talk about that here in just a little bit uh, after we do the review of the previous uh, month's meetings. Um, but I'm looking forward to this conversation and continuing to get to know all of you um, who are engaged in this important work. So with that, um, uh, I'm going to hop off for just a second while Deputy Director Old Metal uh, provides the update because uh, my computer is going to restart in one minute anyways, uh, and then I will <laughs> rejoin the group uh, promptly. So thank you all so much for being here. Debbie? Oops, thanks. Sorry, everyone. And I'm fighting a cold or trying to get over a cold, so I apologize in terms of my voice. 
Um, so good morning. Um, thank you for that opening prayer. And uh, in terms of the last, I'm just, I'm having computer issues too. Um, the last two meetings, am I, Adrian, looking at both this, the special one that we held as well as the prior one in August? Is that accurate? That is, yes. Okay, thanks. Um, so in terms of the August meeting, for those um, who weren't here, we really, you know, spent some time talking about the overall agency, some of the challenges um, in terms of what's needed and we hope to have from this group. There was quite a bit of discussion around um, what CBI has done in terms of helping to uh, educate and inform law enforcement agencies around the state. Uh, we talked about the jurisdictional challenges um, and how we can better educate um, both families, but law enforcement themselves about how to use the MIPA. Um, we also uh, introduced the advisory board page, um, and then we talked a little bit about possible topics for future meetings. Just so you are aware, one of them was human trafficking, and we are working to um, try and get a presentation. We have an Office of Human Trafficking within uh, Division of Criminal Justice but it just so happens that some of their regular meetings conflict with ours, but we will um, get that worked out in the future. Um, and again, I'm doing a very quick overview. As you know, the agendas, the transcripts, and the recordings are all on the website. And then as far as the October meeting we held, that was um, a special meeting called, and thanks to everyone who made themselves available on such short notice. But that was a call to really discuss the hiring process for the new director, what we have to go through in terms of uh, the state process and what we had planned as far as um, engagement, including having that meeting in October with all of you to hear some of the qualities that uh, you are hoping to see in the next director. Um, and we, had, we got a lot of good feedback during that meeting. Um, to give you an update as to where we're at, uh, we should be having that um, job posted within the next week is what we're hopeful. If uh, depending, it may go into the following week. Um, one of the pieces that I believe we spoke of um, or I spoke about was the, um, we want this to be a, nat a national search as we did before with a little bit longer period of um, having it open just because of the critical nature of this position. And so in order to do that, we have to get special approval for it to be a national search um, from a different um, state agency. So we, excuse me, we are waiting on that approval. Um, but are hoping that we'll get that in the next couple of days and then we'll get that posted. So that is a very quick and brief overview. I don't know if anyone has any questions or if anyone would like to add to that uh, overview. Thank you. Good timing, Matt. Well, you wrap it up just in time. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, that was all planned. <laughs> well, very good. Very good. Well, I believe next on our agenda is to talk again about the process for um, bringing on the next selecting and bringing on the next um, director of OMMIR and so we've had some of these conversations with many of you um, in um, public forums and in and, and individual conversations as well and we are getting ready to post the position so the paperwork has been submitted to uh, Department of Safety's uh, human resources. I had a phone call with them this morning uh, to confirm a couple of items uh, and uh, where we're at right now just for everyone's awareness is um, we're going through the paperwork process for the approval so that we can do a national search uh, with the hope of having uh, the position posted here um, uh, in the next week or two. Debbie you got a smirk on your face did you already cover this? I covered it, so but at least we're consistent. So that's yes, good. Yes, I'm glad we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, the um, the thing that we want to really talk with you all about is um, one of the things that's really important to us is to ensure that we have good community 
um, voice in this process. That's why we've been very intentional about talking with all of you in um, multiple settings um, to understand um, what you would like to see uh, from this office moving forward as we select the next director. And as part of the um, hiring process, we are going to have a community panel um, that will interview the finalists for the position. And so when those individuals are selected, there'll be two initial panels that folks will um, sit with. One will be leadership from um, mostly CDPS, um, but from other state representation as well. And then we will also have a community panel. And uh, what we would like from the community panel is a representative from each of the tribes, uh, a representative from the task force, and a representative from this advisory board. And so I wanted to open the conversation um, about how you all would like to uh, self-identify and select as a body a representative to be part of that process. Uh, Nancy Ray? Yes, my question is, uh, are you looking to choose one person? Because out of the representation that you currently have, you have several different cultures and na nations and viewpoints. So are you asking for all of the nations and their sovereignty to determine one person? Um, that's not quite how I would phrase it, but the, uh, the answer is still the same. It, it's that um, we can't unfortunately have a board of uh, a panel of 20 people uh, interviewing uh, these individuals. And so that's why we want to representatives from each of the tribes um, uh, in Colorado here, uh, the task force and someone from the advisory board. It's not meant to be someone that represents um, everybody's viewpoint, um, but it's to have representation uh, from this body uh, in that process. And then there's other ways um, that people can be involved in. And um, one of them that we talked about on previous calls is uh, submitting questions that you would like uh, to be considered as part of the interview process. And um, so there's there's multiple ways that we're, we are getting at this involvement. But yes, uh, the short answer is from this advisory board, we would like um, one person to represent the advisory board as a whole and not necessarily um, um, broader than that, if that makes sense. I think in theory it makes sense, but in practicality and, and what's culturally appropriate, it it is having one person's voice is concerning. Uh, we don't operate that in, in that manner. It's usually done by consensus, mm -hmm. and each person has the right to be able to speak or to, you know, on their own, not just for their, their uh, tri tribal affiliation. Mm -hmm. So I would just say in the future, you might want to examine uh, a more prudent policy that encourages that. Otherwise, it can be viewed as being um, selective and not inclusive. Okay, I, I appreciate that feedback, Nancy Ray. I think what we've been trying to do through this process, this is a much more inclusive process from my understanding than what we've had in the past. Um, and so it's a, it's a balance between being more inclusive uh, and also recognizing that there's some bureaucratic and administrative um, uh, frameworks that we still have to fit within, if that makes sense. Unfortunately, it does make a lot of sense, Matt. <laughs> I, I, unfortunately, it does. Um, but I just want to, um, I have to voice that as a medical clinician and as somebody who works in therapy with the community. We do definitely try to ensure that those voices are included. So you may want to consider something in the future that's different such as um, having an advisory circle to be in that process, everybody invited, and then from that selection process, allowing them to vote for one person. But I do know that there are several different viewpoints that um, when you don't include them, it causes great disruption within our community and it's seen as segregation. So I'm just providing that for you to mull over or to consider understanding that, you know, the, this is kind of where we discuss in our communities where power is distributed and where power is kept. And as we're trying to break that down in our community, especially in Denver and throughout Colorado, to respect our federally recognized tribes, um, it does cause a bit of uh, a conflict. And, and that is something that I'm just letting you know can come up. And I'm just forewarning um, with premonition and also experience 
that these things are something that will need to be considered. But I do applaud you and the other for uh, the other members for attempting to have something a bit more inclusive than what's been done in the past. Thank you. I, I appreciate the uh, uh, the feedback and and um, uh, and your willingness to share that perspective with uh, with me. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Anybody else have thoughts on Go ahead. Okay, I'm not sure if you saw my hand. Um, as I understand it now, then your, your interview process is gonna be, there are gonna be two initial panels, the CDP, us, leadership panel and then this community panel that's going to lead down to you said three finalists two finalists uh i think it uh i'll put my academic hat on here it depends uh I, what we would like to see is six um, people um, invited for interviews uh and then from that um it will be um, narrowed down to a smaller um group of individuals so whether that's one two or three people I, i'm not sure um but but that's the hope is that uh, we'll receive feedback uh, from everybody involved in this process that we will um uh, be able to have those conversations and then the finalists or finalists for the position will um meet with myself uh deputy executive director jenna Locke, and um executive director uh, stan hilke so that group that I'll look at them will be, I, 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 my mind just kind of went like that. <laughs> so you're going to have six finalists. Uh, how How is that being determined who the six finalists are? And then my understanding is you take those six finalists who will get interview opportunities. Mm -hmm. We'll go in front of yourself, you said two, two others, and the community panel before it gets sent down, or the community panel will only be dealing with the last two finalists. No, so the community panel will be involved in the, hopefully it will be six um, okay. initial uh, finalists for the position. Uh, and then to get to that point, um, we're using the same process we do for all positions at CDPS. Uh, so it's a um, blinded review uh, uh, of um, uh, folks within the agency that will um, uh, um, identify those folks uh, to move forward. Uh, to offer interviews to. And then once someone is selected, they'll go through, again, our standard process uh, of um, background polygraph um, uh, review prior to uh, officially being appointed. Oh, okay, the background polygraph is after whoever it is gets chosen. After a person is selected, correct. Okay. Um, on that community panel, there's not a possibility to even for the advisory board, because this can be a large group to even make that two people. So you can get different views and perspectives. I understand the tribes will be bringing their perspectives from their location, but also as a tribal entity, um, that's not a possibility to just even, if you were to make two board members on there, because you're still just talking about basic, I'm, my assumption is the scoring or whatever is gonna be done by each of those members and then those numbers will be used to determine who the two finalists are. That's my understanding, right? Correct, yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a standard um, process that we use for our positions. Okay, and then the, um, the this is my last question, sorry, Debbie. The, the, my last question would be the uh, position description is being used to determine the blinded review, correct? And, and has the, the, that description been made available yet? So, uh, Debbie, do you want to take that um, uh, to talk about the position description and how it informs uh, the overall process? Um, I can let you do the, uh, that, Matt. I was just going to add one piece. I don't know if this answers the question or not, but in terms of the the process, so HR, our human resources department, will go through all of the applications prior to even referring them to our office to see if they meet the minimum qualifications. And so, you know, as most of you know, well, it depends on the position in this job market, but we could get 
it, I want to say the last time we got like maybe 30 or 40 different applicants, but of those 30 or 40, they might not meet the minimum qualifications. And so then those get whittled down and then sent to the division for what's called a subject matter expert review. And that is a panel of people um, that are chosen to review the applicants and then uh, whittle that down for lack of a better term to the six possible candidates to be interviewed. Um, and typically that subject matter uh, expertise panel that reviews those are internal um, to the department um, is the standard practice. Uh, and I don't remember or recall if we uh, spoke of this, Matt, I feel like we did, but the, there is a possibility of having someone from outside participate in that process. But I think we'll run into the same kind of quandary that we have here in terms of how do we determine who that subject matter expertise uh, expert might be in terms of reviewing those applications. Um, and yes, it's the, the wonder of the bureaucratic process, but I'm just throwing that out there. Um, typically they require a minimum of two SMEs, uh, but to review the applications, but in practice, uh, that's typically three. And so now that I've said all that, I'm not sure what Phil's question was, Matt, but I was focused on wanting to help with that initial piece. No, I appreciate that, Debbie. And uh, Vanessa, you had your hand up. Yes, uh, good morning, everybody. And um, thank you, Nancy Ray, for the invocation this morning. It's always good to start off a prayer uh, for a meeting. So I guess my question, I was on the panel last year, and um, I wasn't too sure how, I, I know there was more, I don't know if there was six of us or what, but is, is this going through the same process as last year? Because I know we have, um there were some social workers on there but also we do have our mmir task force for colorado are they being going to be a part of it as well yeah so uh one of the um mentions i um highlighted earlier vanessa was that uh, we had after discussions with stakeholders identified four um, seats for that community panel if you will uh, one from each of the tribes, one from this advisory board, and one from the task force. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. Other thoughts, comments? Are there people that would like to... Start? Oh, go ahead, Phil. Uh, for the SMEs then, um, where do they tend to be coming from because if they're one of the bigger areas where we get a funneling i guess that that's one area where certain people that i think at times we, we're like well they don't quite match what you see as whatever that area you're coming out of because this this position is something that's not out there now if you're using smes grabbing you know let's say utah has a, a OMMI or type person and that's your sme then sure um, I guess that's that becomes my question. What the SMEs, what what, do, what is the subject matter expert on this that's being defined within CDPS? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, it, it really depends. There is first, what I would say is um, we've been in contact with um, uh, um, with other MMIR offices around the country uh, and have been again engage in those conversations for lessons learned and, and information sharing. Um, so moving forward, I think that's a really impactful group um, that's going to do a lot of good um, within this space uh, and really help um, not only us, but it gives us a way to um, uh, share our experience uh, with other offices and, and uh, folks associated um, uh, with this space. Uh, in the past, the SMEs can vary. I, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Debbie here in a second because she has a lot more experience in the um, at the state level uh, than I do with this process. Um, so I'll let her give her perspective from previous um, uh, previous hiring and onboarding processes. But uh, the SME doesn't necessarily have to be specific to um, a particular um, 
function, if that makes sense, right? There could be overlap where we would want an SME that has experience managing an office like this, right? So you would have that perspective and what they think would be helpful. You could have um, uh, potentially uh, feedback from folks that have um, either been victims or been engaged uh, in this process previously or who are um, uh, who provide social services in this type of a space. So it's not, there's not a hard and fast rule for who the SMEs are. We try to have a diversity of perspective on that. And then we also have to realize that um, people can put whatever they want in an application and can answer questions however they want. Um, but I think the real value from my experience, having been a public safety executive for quite a while now, is when you're having that opportunity to interact with them and ask them questions in real time. And you're also getting the opportunity for community members to interact with them and ask them questions in real time. Uh, and I think that dynamic experience uh, provides us a lot better uh, information as we move forward than sometimes we get in, in the static uh, applications. But I'll, I'll turn it back to Debbie because she's uh, handled this obviously a lot more than I have at the state level. Uh, thanks, Matt. So first, um... I'm going to just be completely transparent. Uh, I apologize. So we did speak about the possibility of having external um, folks participate on it. And in talking with HR and in past conversations, I guess it's just been very difficult. And so I will just want to correct myself in that. Um, in terms of who we, I, I have to be transparent. I was not on the um, interview panels last time. But from a SME review perspective, and yes, Phil, that's subject matter expert, and I'm going to say that in air quotes, subject matter expert, because um, everyone might have a different uh, definition of that. But for this position, and it will be ultimately up to Matt as the hiring um, authority working with HR to identify those. But most likely what we'll try and do is include um, folks that have been around and in this process for the past year uh so again i put air quotes but i've been involved since last year so i might be on that panel <clears throat> someone from colorado bureau of investigation likely would be on that panel because of the um, interaction between the agencies um matt i don't want to speak for him but he, you know he could be on it uh we could also look at post um, within the state system. And that's the group that does the um, training for all uh, peace officers. I always forget the, train, the name peace officers in the state. Um, and they've been working to, as you know, uh, incorporate more training um, on this, on the population, the indigenous population and how to be more culturally appropriate for law enforcement agencies. So we'll look to those um, types of positions. And then another one that we would be including would likely be another management team from the Division of Criminal Justice. So that would be someone who would essentially be um, a colleague of this person, the same level and classification. Um, and that is a lot to look at, you know, how the person will be able to navigate government communication skills fit in with the team etc um and then the final thing i'll say and then i'll let folks ask questions but we will have you know three supplemental questions on the application that we have invited people to um give feedback on uh Two of them are the same that we used last year, and I don't have them in front of me, but can get them if needed. Uh, and those, you know, from my perspective, are what I often will focus on when looking at um, the applicants. And then the SMEs will also have all of the feedback that we've heard from you, um, from other stakeholders. Should we go forward with six applicants and the interview panel not be happy with any of those applicants, we can always go back. So I agree with Matt in terms of those interviews are the most critical piece. Um, and we have had some situations where we move forward with six based on the SME's review of it. And none of those met the, you know, hiring panels. Um, expectations or hopes for the position, and then we start looking at those again. Thanks. 
not a perfect process, I know, but uh, we're trying to go into it as educated as possible by getting feedback from everyone. Um, and then Adrian has the supplemental questions. I don't know if you put those in the full chat, Adrian, or just to me, but feel free to put those in the full chat. <clears throat> Do you have any more questions about that? I don't. I, was just, that's, I just wanted to hear what that full process looks like because there are different areas where possibly members of our community who would not quite fit exactly in whatever those definitions are and then they get removed so they don't ever quite even get that to that interview process. And that's what I was wanting to be sure is just to understand how many areas here where people can be removed and what that kind of looks like and the subject matter expert could be one of those areas because maybe the background training for someone who comes through post and how they view what it what is needed versus what the community expectation is could be different and so they might get removed at a point based off of this is how we do it in our system but maybe that's the person you need is someone to reanalyze that that system and that that was that's the only concern but it i do agree that when you get to those six finalists and it does, it's not meeting especially if the community panel is saying this just doesn't work for us any of these people then um then yeah that that's yeah we can go back uh th it just takes long it, it will you know lengthen the whole process but that's why i want to be aware of it so we understand who those subject matter experts are so we could know at least what critical analysis they're putting towards those to know how these may have met that to then move to the interview process. I, I think to me, it's just the transparency of what that looks like. And I know HR is involved in some of that's like black box. It goes <laughs> goes in there, they do what they do, whatever that is. Sometimes some of it's definitely tied into to the law and what's expectations and these these other things that the governor probably sets out as expectations. I just, that, that way in my own frame, I can think of how that worked to get to where, who are these six and, and, and what kind of, hurdles in a sense they had to clear in order to, to get there but i appreciate that because that that transparency helps me understand the process one okay. well, one other thing i'll say is you know the the place that in watching this that typically the most candidates get weeded out if you will and i'm talking across all positions is in that hr review because there when you look at any uh position descriptions there are minimum qualifications and so if those minimal qualifications aren't met, then HR does not send those over um, to us to review. And then the second piece is that this process um, is taking longer than normal, but part of that is um, purposeful in that, you know, we want to ensure that, you know, we are getting the stakeholder input, input from all of you to understand what that position um, what the characteristics, the, you know, skills, abilities, et cetera, are being, you know, looked for. And so that feedback has been critical, you know, to me personally. So when reviewing those applications, that will be taken into consideration um, if that helps at all. Yeah, and um, again, um, uh, when HR reviews these, I just want to make clear that um, they're not doing a judgment whether they think someone has um, the right type of experience or not. They're essentially saying, do they meet the minimum requirements? And the minimum requirements come from the position um, and the legislation. Uh, and then the key things that we're looking for are from one, both of both of those sources, but also from these conversations uh, to Debbie's point that we've been having with um, so many of you on this call and, and others uh, over the last uh, really month and a half. So. Any other comments, questions? Are there people that would um, like to step forward and, and be involved in that process? I would like to nominate Phil for that process. All right, Phil, would, you've, been, you've been nominated. <laughs> I would agree with that nomination, Monica, but do you think that somebody from the community who doesn't work for the state should be involved? I, I would agree with that statement right there. <laughs> I think I just get concerned about his position and, and what he can he can do within that expectation. I was actually going to nominate you or Raven. Well, one of us, Raven, who I'm also nominating, will be on there for the task force. 
I think one of the things that we run into is people who don't do this work have an understanding of how this is impacting our state, what has already been done. Um, I think just because someone's a community member doesn't necessarily put them in a spot where they're going to be able to ask effective questions and to get solid responses on that. So there should be a community member. I wouldn't say anybody else from the state, but except I will always support Phil. Um, I, I think he re always represents with integrity and that's not anything that we've ever, I mean, we've all known him forever and that's never been a question for anyone. Um, and if it has been, it's probably something that's wrong with you and not him. But um, so I think Phil should be on there. I think there, we need to definitely look as a whole who that community member is because it could be more problematic um, if we get the wrong community person in that on that panel. I personally do not want to be on the panel, just FYI. I, I would pers I agree with everything that Monica stated and I would say that Phil is beyond trust in our community. He is the one person that I think that we all gravitate towards um, and his family. I just want to ensure that he's not put in an awkward position um, because of the employment, because we've had that happen with Shelly Sopolo and other people. I, I don't know what to say on that. I, I appreciate um, your all support and view of, uh, of me, but I, I, on this position, I do think it is, it is something where, since I do work for the state at this point, I, do, I, I would agree with Nancy on this. I just, I would, I, even I would like to hear from somebody who works in this this area, like in a manner much deeper than I have. I, even though I've worked through the schools and I, I know these families, I've had family members uh, who who I've lost when I was younger. But I think somebody who understands and lives here doing this work now would probably be there. And Monica, I, I, I appreciate all the words, and Nancy, I appreciate all the words, um, but. I think for this this position on this panel, there there are I think some others who I, I think will do a great job. And I, I would actually Monica, I would have or Nancy Ray, I'd ask you. Uh I, I've known you guys for a while, but also I think there's some others here that as I'm starting to meet in here, I think would be really good and will ask those those questions too, because it really is a I think an important position for this community who will then be actively on the ground working with that person, which would be the hope. I, I would like to hear their voice since in my position, I can't always make those kinds of events or meetings and, and the families that are being helped. I think we need someone who's who's there to, in a sense, be that voice too. So I, th I thank you guys for re the recommendation, but uh, I think at this time, I, I just can't can't do that. that. I don't think I'm the appropriate person for that. Well, you're a solid plan B, just accept it. So if, if no one else does that, <laughs> Phil's on the committee, Phil's on the panel. <laughs> yeah, we agree. But Monica, again, I would agree with Phil. I, I would say that um, in terms of really understanding what's going on, uh, even though we have a member of the task force, I would also agree with Phil and say that um, for the Denver and Colorado Springs and Colorado wide community, you're, you're a natural choice because you do know and have been involved with the legislation, legislation piece, and it doesn't compromise you um, in your position. Uh, I know capacity is an issue, but I would ask you and the others to consider um, supporting you, especially that you and Raven do work really well together, and we are always getting reports and the things that we need from you and from her in other committee meetings. Um, so I just wanted to say that uh, Phil is definitely my number one choice, but so are you. I, I think I'm, I, I, I appreciate that, I do, but I don't think, I think maybe someone from Hasea, unfortunately there's not, everybody, this is a topic everybody is very passionate about, but there are actually very few people doing the actual work. Um, a lot of people talk about the work, but they aren't doing it. Um, even if they claim publicly that they are. So I think trying to find someone who, from the community who's actually involved with MMI work in the state of Colorado is gonna be challenging. Um, Hasea, I mean, we are the only DV and sexual assault program, but that's not, that's, D, that's MMIR prevention. That's not necessarily MMIR work. 
um, that's separate for the task force. But I mean, I, I think we have a little bit of time to try to figure out folks and see who would even want to be part of that process. I agree. I think that's wise, Monica. And thank you for considering it or considering an elder or another member that you guys work with, maybe that you might be able to recommend, because I do agree with you. It is definitely different when you're involved day to day with the criminal aspects of the work and the families. And it's not something that I see um, and agree with you that there are many people who talk about it, but I'm not seeing those active except for the people that I've mentioned with you and Raven and your commit in your task force. Would it be helpful because knowing that we don't have everyone here today, would it be helpful to um, send out a message uh, to the entire advisory board and uh, provide a platform for folks to um, self-identify and then you all can work as a as a group to select um, an individual individuals to be a part of the process? Is that is that a um, agreeable step forward here? I think that's a great suggestion, Matt. I think that 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 is very much more what I was talking about about the inclusivity of that decision making for that person. Okay. Um, so thank you. Well done. Well done. Um, well, um, uh, and like I said, I, I I want to get as many voices at the table for this as possible, and that's why we have been so intentional about this process. And and I can also recognize that. Um, there are, are always ways that we continue to improve in this space, um, but just know that this is really important to us. Um, and so any ways uh, that we can continue to be better uh, as we continue our relationship here, I, I really want uh, and appreciate the, the open dialogue associated with that. Um, so Adrian, is it okay if we make a note of that? We can send out something after this meeting um, to try and bring in additional voices. Yep, absolutely. I will, um... If it's okay with everyone, I'll create a job form um, that will allow you to, um, it'll list all of the advisory board members. And then if you want to select someone or if you want to self-select or if you would like to not be <laughs> selected, um, we'll give everybody the options and I'll send it out after the meeting today. I just personally wanted to add, I don't have the capacity to join um, in that type of a process at this point in time. And thank you, Phil. Um, and thank you, Monica, for also being able to speak to these things. But I am currently involved in litigation in Custer County and in the process of filing a civil rights suit against the Custer County Sheriff. So I would not be um, as a victim. I am not a person that at this point in time has the capacity to do to do any volunteer work. Um, outside of what I'm already doing. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, well, if there's, is there any other comment uh, on this particular topic? I don't want to cut the discussion short if there's things that you all would like to raise that we haven't already covered. All right, uh, hearing none. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Phil, uh, who is helping put together the report that the legislation requires from the advisory board. And so um, Phil and I haven't had a chance to um, connect too much about this before today, but um, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge uh, the work that Phil has put into this, and I, I very much appreciate him stepping forward um, and serving in this way. Uh, I know you're a very busy person, Phil. Um, and uh, I just really appreciate your willingness uh, to engage. Uh, and I'm, I'm hopeful today that this conversation can lead us towards some of the um, uh, material that will be included in the uh, report from the board's perspective and recommendations that you all would like to uh, elevate uh, and include in this particular report. So with that, I will stop talking. I will turn it over to Phil. Thank you, uh, Matt. Yeah, I, I think that was more uh, gratitude than 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 I deserve because I have been very busy, and and Adrian and I have spoken, and and Debbie, and and we've gone over kind of the House bill at least on what it is we need to have in the report. I'm going to try to share my screen here. I'll probably mess this up, so hold on. <clears throat> so so I was just this is something where I was asked. 
to just help uh, create the the a report that the advisory board under the House Bill 2354, which uh, was finalized, I think signed in July. Let me see if it's at the bottom. Actually, June, looks like June 2nd. Um, what I've highlighted is the part that we're talking about. And I don't know if you have smaller screens, it might be hard to see, but the, I'm gonna read it for just for our help. The advisory board shall prepare an annual report that includes a summary of the advisory board's work during the prior year and the advisory board's recommendations about any issue related to the office to improve any aspect of the office, its operation or procedures in furtherance of the office's mission. No later than December 31st of each year, the advisory board shall submit the annual report to the House of Representatives Judiciary Committee and State Civic Military and Veterans Affairs Committee and the Senate Judiciary Committee and State Veterans and Military Affairs Committee or the successor committee. And then it's notwithstanding uh, 24-1-136. Actually, you know what? I haven't even looked those up, so I'd have to figure out what those those are. The reporting requirements specified in the subsection 4D continues indefinitely. So my understanding in looking over this part was that, and I believe it's just we need to create as the advisory board a report that at least talks about what recommendations kind of tells the work that we've done this, this past year. I believe uh, what we heard from the governor's office, and Debbie, you might, you're, you, I think you're the one who sent the information was it's gonna cover the, the annual year, January 1st to December 31st. So it was any kind of work that the advisory board has done this whole calendar year, correct? Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, the, the issue becomes, and, and my request was, I was gonna try and help create at least a synopsis of the meetings that had happened prior. I, I've just been, I just didn't have time. Um, so what we're gonna try and do uh, is still create at least a, a, a synopsis of those meetings and that information that came out in the meetings. But what, what we're asking for from the advisory committee is a little bit of help. Uh, well, actually, uh, this is actually we need the advisory uh, committee here, advisory board to help create what do we want in this report? What kinds of things um, you feel like were recommendations that were given, improved the aspect of the office and its procedures, all those different things in the, in the mission. And then, um, And then uh, I guess a synopsis or summary of the the, the board's work. Uh, that seems that is pretty limited actually. Now that I look at it, because it's right the advisory board's recommendations about any issue related to the office to improve any aspect of the office, its operation or procedures. So if there were things that anyone may have even sent over, I think that the that the office would have looked at, that Aaron would have looked at prior to leaving. Um, we'd like to get capture that into this document so we can send it to basically it looks like four different committees, two in the House, two in the Senate. And, so, and I think that's so they can be aware and have another place for the advisory board to send information regarding uh, the matters that, that we've looked at. Um, what I'm asking is that if there, and I think Adrian, you're gonna create at least a form to capture that in, uh, will be sent out to the advisory members. We're gonna set a deadline at December 1st, which is in, just in a couple weeks. And I'm gonna set it at noon so that then I can meet with Adrian and anyone else who wants to be in on that meeting. Uh, we'll take a look at the information that came in so we can put it into a cohesive kind of uh, report. Um, anyone who would like to be a part of that? Um, Adrian, actually on that form, if you could put um, my email and they can email me saying, hey, I'd like to be also a part of that that look at the information that comes in, because I think the more minds that look at it, the quicker we can resolve and make sure that this report's done quickly. Um, that meeting would be on December 1st, I think on the calendar here, I set a time for Adrian and I to meet from 1.30 to 3.30 to look at the information that comes in and then format it, get it into a current form uh, of all these different views and takes and then on December 4th, we'll send that out to the entire advisor board. And Matt, I, I know you haven't probably heard much on this because this is something we've just formulated because I got too overwhelmed in my own schedule. 
but December 4th, then we would send that out back out to the advisory committee to look over and say, is this what the board wants to send? The assumption will be we'll send it forward ex unless you have concerns and then email those concerns. And then um, we'll, we'll go through that and send it back out to the, the board to the board and hopefully have a final December 12th uh, completion of all the edits and everything else from advisory board members on on that just so we can send over that uh, that report that's required by House Bill uh, 2354. And then I think in the future, what we need to do in February is the very first thing on the agenda is pick two, three, I'd, I'd say about three people just in case somebody leaves and we just don't want it to become then something we have to do later. But plan out what that process will be for creating the report for next year so that it's something that gets worked on throughout the year and it's just a quick finalization at the end of the year. But that I think will be for the February meeting and that way we can be in front of this. Uh, Adrian, I'm probably missing something in our discussions. If I've missed anything, that was kind of the general idea at this point. Nope, you're good. I've just been typing it into um, the chat um, <clears throat> for people to have the timeline. Um, I also put the meeting link in there. If anyone would like to email um, or chat me, um, I can add you to that meeting as well. Um, but I'll include Phil's email on the form. Uh, and, and if this isn't something that the, the board wants the process to be, I, right, right now I'm just, I'm open to whatever. This is just something that um, I did have talks with Matt and Debbie earlier and there was going to be a different process. And then I just, I just didn't have the time to do all the, the items that I, I stated I could do. And th there was just too many things going on in my, my own office and world at the time. And this is the month of native presentations. <laughs> so evenings got taken up too. Um, so in any input now I've, I'm open to, I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting on this. But suggestions, ideas, a better way of process, I'll anything we just got to have this report done and turned in by December 31st. But as, as you're all aware, everything from the 25th through the 29th, because I don't think I think the 31st is yeah Sunday. So this really needs to be done before Christmas. No, and I'd rather not go past the 15th even just because people tend to be on leave or using holiday kind of time there that, that that just gets into an area where we're all really busy. So I'm open to any suggestions or is everybody okay with this as a quick process just to get our meetings down? And Adrian has at least uh, gone through and given uh, a form where we've started um, getting at least the highlights of what the meetings were and even Debbie's uh, statements here for the August and Oc October meetings is kind of what we're looking at. So with that, I'm gonna stop for a moment and any ideas or better ways of doing it, please let me know. I would be, well, first, thank you, Phil. I really appreciate that. Um, are there things that we would like to discuss or that you all would like to discuss as the advisory board um, to um, get the conversation going as far as recommendations, or would you like more time simply to reflect and, and utilize the, the job form uh, that will be sent out to the group? Yeah, that's a good idea. If we could capture anything even by, by voice right now, it would be good, and we'll include that. That way you don't even have to take time to fill out the form. We'll, we'll have captured it. I'm not formally on this advisory board. I just eavesdrop on these calls. <laughs> so if there's anything for your report that our task force can help you with or any data or anything that you need, we're happy to work with you on that. Yeah, I think when Adrian sends out that, that form, then if there are certain numbers and things, uh, that would be good. We could we could put that on on there. And our what, task force. I need to comment. Oh, I Go was ahead, gonna say our task force tracks a few numbers that are different than what 
the is are on the dashboard. So we have a more inclusive list for Colorado um, than what the OMIR office currently is tracking. And I was just going to add, Phil, I think that you've got a good pathway and I think that your time frame for what's needed and the considerations of other obstacles is really good as it is usually. So um, I will definitely make time in my capacity to fill that out and to contribute um, as an advisory board member. So thank you, Phil, for all of your work. And this is why we all trust you, because you show up and you just get it done. And that is not flattery. That is that is earned. So thank you for what you do. I appreciate that, but I I, I had already uh, offered to Debbie and Matt to have everything done by now. <laughs> Damn, it's so November. It's Indian time. Can... <laughs> it's Indian time. Don't worry. I know you've been doing all the powwow trail and getting all of that cultural uh, uh, connection to families going. And we see you, Phil, and, and we love you. And we want you to know that every one of us feels the same about you. Thank you for taking on the additional work, sir. I appreciate that. So. If there's anyone who even right now, if you could just even name some of the things that we're aware of that the board definitely supported and helped, even though we'll go back and pull it out of the, the meetings. I have to say, I, 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 I get through these meetings sometimes and then I jump in into something else and some of that gets lost in memory unless I see it written later. Is, is there anything that everybody remembers at this moment that you're like, hey, don't forget to include this? that do you recall from any of our pre or prior meetings? I was going to just say that I think that Monica's offering was actually the most appropriate and the most needed data sets um, because they have more of a reality um, of what's going on. So being able to include that information from her and Raven from the task force, I think, is going to be able to give, give us the data sets for better discernment um, and get an actual feel for what's realistic and like like to Monica's point, what we read on Facebook or what we read in the news isn't always necessarily what's actually happening and the only people who know are boots on the ground. So I think Monica's suggestion and, and the task force would be, a, would be a good one. Thank you, Nancy. And I, and I I agree. And I think we'll we'll probably title it something like the advisory board takes note of uh, and that that, that other um, bit of information that's available also uh, possibly. Um, the one thing I can also think of is we had the discussion about uh, the position. Uh, I think we'll make sure we're highlighting that, that there was a special meeting in order to take that into account. Uh, the discussion today about the hiring process and recommendations that were given. Um, I think one of the other things was the advisory board. Um, what was it called? Uh, website? Was it a website or, or, or right? Yes, so Phil, I'll just jump in first. I want to echo everyone's and Nancy Ray. Um, praise of your willingness to jump into this so from what little experience i have you've been great so please don't worry about the time frame um in terms of re remembering and making sure we capture everything adrian um as all of you know does a tremendous job and just in going through the website you know we've captured um we ha have all of those minutes and everything captured and we're more than willing um, as Adrian has said, to help with that, you know, in terms of bringing that information together for then you and the board or whoever you choose to look at it to make sure that you feel it's an, um, you know, adequate representation. So I just don't want folks to feel alone in this and that we're here to support you in developing the report. And we'll have a lot of that historical information and kind of the um, accomplished accomplishments along the way i appreciate that no that, that doesn't need to be said the the your office has been hugely so helpful because uh, uh, the heavy lifting is being done by your office and i and my part was to be just even to go and review and that didn't even happen on my end and adrian you, you've done a, an excellent job i mean that the amount of work that you get done so quickly i do do appreciate and, and i think you'll be very supportive of whoever gets in that 
position. You're, you're necessary for this position. Um, and Phil, can I just interrupt for a minute? I was not saying that we're doing the heavy lifting. I was oh, you are. wanting to offer our support. To you. <laughs> Um, well, in a, in, yeah, in the sense of getting all that material into uh, a format to where it can be reviewed, that yeah. is helpful. That is that the logistics okay. is always really the heavy lift. The top level analysis is, is seems okay. easy compared I to just, that. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying this isn't in your hands. This is our uh, the advisory board's approval is necessary for this. And what we're trying to do is just get that compiled into uh, a form that spurs everybody's memory. Uh, cause we, we're all in those meetings. So then it becomes, is there anything we're forgetting? And does this give a good synopsis of what the discussions were? That's really what we're, we're needing because we're really wanting to report to those committees as to what the advisory board view and concerns may be. And then how, uh, my understanding would be CDPS responded and, and took that into account as, as they move forward, because that seems to be what we're trying to do is improve the office. And, and it says any aspect of the office and its operation. So that's, that's the necessary, you know, push for the advisory board. And we just want to make sure we're letting those committees know that's what we're, we've been doing it. And, and if there are other concerns and such, or needs for further legislation, I'm, I'm sure we have people who know who to contact and, and, and if that's necessary in some future class, I'm going really broad now. <laughs> so, so really what I need to know though, is what, if anyone has any other things, throw, throw it in the chat or just date it. Uh, so we can take into account, we're making sure we're doing a synopsis on that area so that, that everybody on the advisory board feels like what was really the core of what we want to make sure was was looked at is within that report i don't want to leave anything out um i, I think our group is a lot smaller than it had been in the past too seems like we used to have 20 i don't know how many people are on here right now but it seems like in the past we've had 20 some people at least um but this whole this 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 google form or what adrian's creating a document to capture that will get sent to everybody who's a member uh, and Monica, I appreciate I, I appreciate you being here and, and listening in because I think that is a kind of the function of the advisory board is to hear from the community and get that information to the OMMIR. I'm just nosy. That's all. <laughs> well, that, it's not being noisy because when we're helping, who we're going to be helping? That we need to know and understand. It's always easier <laughs> to go forward when you've heard it from the horse's mouth, per se. You both are so great. You know, these meetings are so hard to come to and you and Monica, even when it's difficult, make us just laugh and feel like we're connected to do this work. So thank you both. Anyone else? Well, not, not hearing any other uh, voice or like I say, you can throw it in the chat that way, Adrian, and it will be captured, I think, on the recording too, and we can make sure we include it. Like I say, so look for us. The deadline will be December 1st again, which is a Friday, and we're setting at noon because we'll be looking at that afternoon. If you want to jump on that meeting to see and make sure we can hit all those things and help us just um, quickly edit, then December 4th, look for, for an email from, it'll come from Adrian, I'm assuming her own email. Uh, yes. Okay. Look for that email so you can look it over. We'll give about, was that about, uh, my math is escaping me, eight days to, and it'll be a Tuesday, which I know is odd, but we wanted to give you at least the weekend and then a Monday to look everything over. And then by close of business on Tuesday, December 12th, we'll take any of those edits that are needed kind of fix, finish whatever kind of final kind of look we need to take on it, make sure it um, uh, the formatting is in a way that looks clean and presentable. Um, we'll probably send that out to the community one more time, but we're also going to be sending that over. Yeah, yeah Raven, I'll take, I'll take any help. <laughs> um, Adrian, actually, so, so whatever comes through um, and, and Raven, you know what, I'll, I'll, 
set up a meeting too so that you, you can help me do kind of the editing and, and looking over of and maybe break up some of those um, meetings so if anyone else also wants to jump in there uh, i'm more than happy to to help with help with the editing it, it's it's beneficial and then so by the 12th uh to debbie and matt we should be sending at least kind of what that report looks like so then they can make sure it gets to the offices it needs to uh definitely we'd, we we want this done by the 15th even if there's something that needs to go back and do any change it gives there about three days there to try to get everything done and and then that way we can make sure it's off of our out of our hands and and where it needs to go if that will work for matt and debbie that sounds great to me phil and um anything we can do to uh to engage the advisory board members um in in helping you craft this and and understand how we can continue to best serve uh the community uh, and all of you is 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 really important to uh to us and so i i just really appreciate everyone being willing to uh, to jump in here and help uh, uh, help fill with this because uh, it is a lift and um, but it is very important for us as we continue to move forward uh, to continue to serve this community. Um, anything else on the report? We do have a report uh, on our side as well that's due by December 31st. Um, we are working on that currently and it's essentially a rundown of everything that uh, the office has been engaged in this calendar year. Uh, so similar, but from the perspective of the uh, the office itself. And so that will be uh, made available once we kind of get through the uh, the drafting and review process. And I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing that with all of you. Um, uh, and then if there's nothing else on the reports, I'd like to open it up uh, for folks to share about uh, upcoming events in the community uh, for the good of the group. And also, um, as we as we talk about community um, uh, community events coming up, anything that you would like us um, uh, to invite us to, uh, I would love to be a part of. And um, and so uh, please keep that in mind if, if you'd be so kind uh, as we move forward here. We have a MMIR update, not necessarily a community event. Um, Raven and I met with Chris Schaefer and Joel and um, I think Susan Medina maybe is her name. Um, and we discussed how the MIPA was not um, effectively going out by all law enforcement, that it was an optional investigative tool versus a mandatory alert. And we suggest we talked with Joel a couple weeks ago about, troubleshooting how that could be improved so that we don't have to have additional legislation because I'm I'm sick of going to the Capitol personally. So um, they were able to come up with a pretty good solution that we had suggested about making that an automated process. So as soon as any law enforcement agency um, will put in the I on the dashboard for indigenous after a missing person report is filed, it will automatically alert CBI and they can start initiating the MIPA at that end. So it will streamline that process. It will take away some of that potentially racist um, mindsets of certain law enforcement agencies where they don't feel like they need to send out a MIPA. Um, that's not rolling out immediately. It's going to take a minute with software folks and putting all that in process, but it is something it's a it's a nice compromise to have and being able to streamline a process in-house willingly versus having to force the issue with additional legislation. So um, I'm hoping within the next year that will improve a lot of these alerts going out timely because we have found that normal, like we've said before in these meetings, normally if an alert goes out there, they tend to be found within a week. So those alerts going out more regularly can only help getting our relatives home safely. Thank you, Monica. We appreciate you sharing that update. So I look forward to working with Melissa and Kirby and um, the alerts team to see how that process is going to work. And maybe um, I can get a little information to share with the advisory board. So thank you. Um, Carla, you would raise your hand. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for having me today. Um, I'm sorry I'm in and out of court right now. But um, I just wanted to share, I got a new job down by the next three months. But I'm working with a new 
um, unhoused homeless respite recovery um, organization, nonprofit that we're going to have a grand opening on the 30th, and that will be for Jefferson County. We recently had a collaboration meeting with um, about seven to eight Jefferson County um, outreach teams and churches and police departments. So um, we're doing, we're going to have a grand opening for our uh, day center. We're also moving forward with a 50 bed uh, shelter and a bridge, motel, and bolted. Um, so we're working on that. I work as an addiction counselor and therapist in, inside the shelters. And um, so, yeah, just keeping that on the radar where this will be the first um, unhoused. Um, shelter for Jefferson County. Um, we're, we're working from Evergreen to Wheatbridge to Westminster to Adams County. Um, so we're doing that in the future. Um, also, our respite center is actually housing a 30 day, uh, it's a 10 bed respite. It's for our homeless that are on the streets and accumulated trauma and injury that we house them for. As long as they heal and have a couple more days housing. So we're doing that now. So I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Um, congratulations on your new opportunity. Um, so if you wanted to share any of the information, um, you're welcome to send it to me in my email and I can share it out to the um, advisory board as well. Anybody else have some goings on, updates, things uh, that we should be aware of? Hi, Nancy Ray. Hi, Adrian. Thank you so much for all of your work and for all of the kindness you showed to my relative while he was with us. I really appreciate you. Um, yeah, actually, in the community, there's a few needs right now. Um, the uh, American Native Bank in Denver is collecting new and unused coats. Uh, Quica Montoya from the SOS camp also stated that many of the clients there at the camp also need new and unused coats in addition to blankets. Uh, there is also an upcoming elders dinner for Denver Indian Center Inc., which many of us on this call um, have supported and continue to donate and support to. And there are approximately 200 to 300 elders that will be in attendance. So if any of your offices would like to gather nice items such as hats, um, gloves, um, buffalo tooth jewelry, <laughs> any, any kind of gift that you think would be nice and appropriate for an elder, you are more than welcome to drop those off to um, Denver Indian Center, Inc. And also Spirit of the Sun, Shannon Francis, and um, that group is collecting food items which is also needed. And then Jennifer Wolf from Project Mosaic, also in her neighborhood, had a busload of people dropped off from Venezuela. I guess they came in from the border in Texas and Texas is busing everybody everywhere. Um, so they are also in need of coats for children and families. So Jennifer Wolf would be the contact for that because it's directly in her neighborhood. Um, on the Herbal Gardens Wellness Front, we have our next court date, December 12th. <clears throat> And uh, we are, have been in the process of litigation for four years with neighbors around us who are preventing us from using a 35 acre lot that was donated to me personally and my family that I have planned to use for the organization in our community. And they have been interfering and using intimidation tactics. Um, it's not been an easy process over the last four years. I'm very exhausted, and I've had several grand mal seizures, including one yesterday, which is why I'm having a hard time today. But I want to um, let you all know that when I am incapacitated, it's because I am having to protect myself and the land at this point in time, which is part of the territory that is encoded in federal government uh, for our exclusive use um, that has been occupied and not enforced in southeast Colorado. The last thing I would let you know is that we are looking, if anybody has an idea for a premiere, um, we did one with Rocky Mountain PBS at Denver Indian Center, Inc. One of our um, advisors is Kate Perdoni, 
uh, who's helped me uh, connect all of the Buffalo work that we do through these documentaries. We have another one from our partners uh, at Chris Smith at, oh my gosh, there's so many different names of the environmental organizations, I apologize, for Defenders of Wildlife. And they also are looking for a space or location for a premiere of one of their films on, um, on conservation. So uh, the last thing I will say is that we start our virtual winter series on winter solstice. We have offered an advisory uh, virtual meeting every Saturday from 11 to 12 so that people can get more familiar with our community and what protocols and behaviors are appropriate. You are all welcome to join. Those are always posted on the Facebook page, um, but they are from 11 to 12, usually every Saturday, um, unless somebody gets sick. Um, so that's what we have currently going on at Herbal Gardens Wellness. In addition to the 100 people I personally take care of, Carla has also begun her training for the electronic health record and her patient health navigation um, work with us to help us with um, homeless relatives. And, and so far in that work, she's placed four uh, Dene relatives in the SOS camp. So just thank you to Carla for all the additional work that she helps, uh, helps me get done in a very small organization with very limited funding. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Nancy. We're so glad you were able to join us um, despite some of the health issues that you're having. So we appreciate you bringing attention. I'm gonna look up some of those events so that I can get them posted. Um, and then uh, Debbie. You're muted, Debbie. Well, everyone missed such profound statements. Um, so Adrian, first, thank you for saying you'll capture all those events. So uh, obviously this is always a time of need and donations, but something that the division we've been talking about um, is trying to, from a perspective of kind of community service, like sponsor certain groups or needs and i'm wondering um and i'll take this on is if i'll look into dcj perhaps doing its own mini drive um nancy ray to see if we can collect like coats and some of those items you mentioned um i can see if we could do it at a more department-wide level but obviously have more control within our division and no promises in terms of how that will turn out but um I'm assuming it's not a uh, specific deadline because there's always an ongoing need. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it's something that uh, that I'd like to just put out there as an opportunity. Thank you, Debbie, because every little bit helps. And the more that you spread that among your family and friends, your church groups or your allies and it just, there are definitely physical locations for these drop-offs. They are definitely welcome to any time. Um, one of the most difficult challenges that we face at this time of year is do we keep people warm or do we feed them? So that is not an easy place for people who are self-sufficient, autonomous, and capable of hunting to provide our own. Um, so it is a crux, and I do appreciate you saying that in any work and any gift that you can give. I thank you for that from my heart. Thank you for caring about our community. Absolutely. And we'll keep you posted on that. Um, if nobody else has anything they'd like to add. Um, oh, Jennifer um, added um, the CCIA in the chat with a community events call calendar. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'll definitely add that to my resources. Um, Matt, oh, thanks, Adrian. Um, yeah, of course. Nice to, nice to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see your face. Um, Matt, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, actually, uh, Jennifer, uh, if I can put you on the spot, do you want to talk about the calendar a little bit and how people can um, add events to it? Or if the community already is well aware, then um, we can move on. But I think it might be good information uh, for the group if uh sure absolutely um i appreciate the time um 
so kind of as a result of our AIA and organization calls, they're, they're a monthly call for community organizations to jump in and kind of just share resources and opportunities and, and community events that are coming up. And um, there's just so much information that I feel like a little bit of it was getting getting lost in translation. So as a result, we launched the community events calendar um, and it's right on our uh, CCIA website. So you can go in there, see what's going on, um, uh, get involved. It also has links to how you can be involved, how you can sign up if there's registration um, and all kinds of things. And I think just coincidentally, it started in the month of November um, but uh, we don't want it to be like a Native American Heritage Month thing because Native American heritage should be celebrated year round. So um, although it's coincidental that it started this month, it's something that we are in anticipating having uh, year round. So if there's anything that you know that's coming up you know, later in the year or um, coming up soon, or even just kind of thoughts of getting things started, let us know, send us an email or um, just, just ping us, let us know and we'll add it to the calendar calendar um, and you can send that to either Megan, our executive assistant, or myself. Great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I really appreciate that. Of course. Um, uh, any other comments in this on this topic before we move on to the last topic of the agenda? I appreciate people putting things in the uh, chat too. That's been helpful. I've been adding uh, multiple tabs on my computer here so I can follow up and, and learn more about some of these great nonprofits uh, in particular. Um, so then uh, before we wrap, I would like to open it up to have an understanding of what this group would find helpful for the next agenda, um, what they'd like to discuss. I know in previous conversations, we talked about ways that um, we can engage this board more fully uh, and, uh, uh, and continue to um, utilize you all as a resource uh, to the degree you're willing to do that. Uh, I know it's asking a lot sometimes and, and just being here is a, is a lift and so I appreciate everyone um, being part of this. Um, are there other things people would like to add to the agenda or would, would like to discuss uh, in the next quarterly meeting? Yes, we would like a presentation by the task force um, so that people can all in the community who are not being active or participating might have a better idea of the exact weight that they're carrying so that we can understand what further resources they might need uh, in this process. Uh, even if that resource is just prayer at this point, we, we definitely need to know. And Monica and Raven have taken, and that task force have taken on a tremendous amount of work. And I think it would be good for the rest of the community to actually have a clear understanding of all of the, the different tasks that they have actually taken on. Well, Nancy, how convenient. We just sent a presentation to Matt, so we can <laughs> that one. See, see, Monica, you're always ahead of the curve. I know we always talk like that to each other so sharp, but you're always ahead of the curve, and that's why I love you. Thank you for doing that. Awesome. I really appreciate, though, Nancy Volunteering us to do that because i was like that is an excellent idea and then i was like oh wait she means me <laughs> thank you nancy ray <laughs> well you know if we throw in a missy elliott song somewhere in between in that presentation we might be able to show them how jiggy we get and how we have to keep our spirits up there raven <laughs> so thank you love you sis love you sir <laughs> love you too thank you well that's wonderful and uh, i will check my email uh what other topics um areas of concern do people have or, or things that they would like to elevate uh, in this space? Hey, this is Jennifer from the CCIA again. Um, I love that recommendation from Nancy Ray, and I would even go uh, just a tad bit further to say, is there any way that we can get some additional, I guess just clarity on the various task force, advisory boards, and other things going on that how we can, I guess, crosswalk who's doing what, what education is out there to support that, and how this group can support the work going on in other areas, or how how we can all just kind of be on the same page and supporting each other. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, 
maybe maybe we can send a call out uh, to people uh, to bring forward uh, different working groups or subcommittees, if that makes sense, um, to try and uh, organize those ahead of time to, uh, to inform the conversation. Is that okay with the group? I add that to Adrian's ever-expanding daily list. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, and Nancy Ray, I, I do see your uh, comment in the chat. I'll, uh, I'll reach out to you. Anything else that people would like to put on our radar for uh, conversations coming up? Oh yeah, and the uh, advisory board report uh, for the next year. Thanks for that, Phil. Uh, you don't want to be poked on uh, uh, and nudged in November to see if uh, we can uh, you to help us out. <laughs> I, I prefer not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think that's a. Uh, um, I think that's a. Uh, um, a, a great strategy to the degree, especially that we can um, automate this, right? The It's somewhat prescriptive and what we need to uh, be reporting both on our end and then and on your end. Um, so to the degree we can build that as we go throughout the year and, and decrease everyone's workload. Um, I, th I think that's a great suggestion. Matt, I was wondering if there's anybody um, from Ute Country that uh, might, from one of their organizations, also like to present. I know that prior to his departure, Aaron was working um, quite uh, extensively with, with the Ute. Um, and so I'm just wondering if there's a possibility to invite their human services or mm -hmm. maybe one of their MMIR nonprofits to also present. Um, I know that we're very heavy on the task force within the majority of Colorado, but I also know that they have some groups that are working on the same issue down there. Yep. I, they I, don't I, have MMIR nonprofits with the Ute, either Ute Nation. There's um, our our task force has two Ute members um, from the Southern Ute tribe, so we can have them present, or I can ask them if they will present. But there is no formal. There's Native Love down at the Southern Ute tribe, but they're doing more youth focused work. And then they have a domestic violence program that covers both reservations, but they don't have any formal MMIR nonprofits down there. Excellent. And yeah, you're the two members I in your group, Monica. I met them um, in Denver when I was there in my doing clinics. So I definitely, if that's a possibility, to ask them just to have that um, inclusion and to gain some perspective for maybe what they're dealing with as federally recognized tribes. I think that would be very helpful and inclusive. And so thank you for that suggestion. And thank you for your knowledge. All right. Uh, any other uh, things we can put on the uh, in the queue to work on moving forward or to bring to this group for discussion? And I think one thing that'll be nice too, once the reports are finalized and we have a chance as a group to review them, uh, it can help kind of inform some of those uh, agendas moving forward, uh, particularly around the recommendations and and um, and how we can continue to improve and engage in those spaces. So, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, I will turn it over to Adrian uh, for any last business before we close out. But uh, again, I just really appreciate everyone being here, um, uh, taking this time out of your busy schedules, um, and and again to tell you how thankful I am uh, for those of you that have been. Um, open a conversation with me um, and and have been welcoming as I'm new in this space. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who joined us today. We really appreciate it. Um, we are wrapping up a little early, but I will send out um, uh, the job form uh, for your suggestions on the advisory board report recommendations um, for Phil. And then I'll also send one for anyone who potentially wants to be a part of the selection process, um, the interview process when they um, do get the position um, posted. Uh, and I know Phil had a question about the position description. Um, once it's posted, that should be available for the public as well. But nobody has anything for me. Um, I hope you guys all have a great uh, rest of your day. And Adrian, I'm just going to add when that 
<clears throat> position description gets announced, we'll send it out and as much as you can help distribute it as wide as possible, um, the better and we would greatly appreciate that. All right, folks, have a great uh, rest of your day. You guys have a wonderful day. Many blessings to you, and thank you for all the work everyone does. Bill, I miss you. <laughs> See you in January. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't. Nope. Okay. Super.